this week, two home games, and that's it for the home schedule, right? That's it, okay. yes. So that means yeah. – Cam- I want to talk about Cameron in particular. That's it for her at home. Like, as you think about her career, <laughs> you know, what? how do you kind of describe the, her journey? Well, both Camry and, and Nikki, to me, just so much epitomize the program and the growth of the program. And, uh, you know, Camry came in to the Air Force Academy – with a really great high school resume. You know, she was very highly thought of in, in Oklahoma and and just you know, we were quite excited that we were able to get her and at that at that point in our program's development. Um, and then of course she comes into the academy and and gets hit upside of the head like so many freshmen do. Um, and has a few years of just trying to figure so many things out and starts to get it all figured out in her junior year a little bit and uh, and then really develops into into a very potent score you know in her senior year always uh, highly thought of on the hill excellent student just an outstanding cadet in every way and um, and I'm just just want have this finish as positive as possible for her and for Nikki both. They've both given their heart and souls to this program. I've heard people talk about Camry's intellect as you know next <laughs> level. How have you seen that help or even hurt her as an athlete? <laughs> um, I, I've coached, I've had the great privilege of coaching at, at, at two outstanding, well, a lot of really good academic schools, but two outstanding, outstanding academic schools where you had to have, you know, the test scores, grades, all that to, to even have an opportunity to be recruited, and that was Yale and here. And so I've coached a lot of really smart kids. <laughs> um, doesn't, always, doesn't always help on the court because they tend to be extremely analytical, and, and they also, um, you know, really, really smart kids want to be right. They, they don't want to mess up. You know, they really don't want to mess up. And... So they don't have that capacity always to just go for it and see what happens, you know. Um, they want their perfectionists. So, and Camry very much falls into that category. She's she's a perfectionist. She hates to mess up. She had a, a big problem early on in her career with with being just destroyed by you know a mistake or something that didn't work out, and and having to learn how to how to let it go and and just move on and that mistakes happen and um so it it can it can be both a good thing and a bad thing it's it's also one of the things that gets kids like that into the gym you know wanting to be outstanding at whatever they do um and and i still maintain camry he's got the prettiest jump shot in the conference <laughs> did that come you know on arrival was that already there or is she that was that was always her 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 strength Yes, she had a great deal to learn about defense, um, and for that matter, about you know off ball, what to do off ball, because she, like so many young players who've been stars in high school, she only knew the ball in her hands, and so having to learn what what do I do when the ball's not in my hands, and and it was just a whole what do I do with the screen? What's that? <laughs> you know, it was just a whole whole different experience. Uh, but she's, she's come a long way. She's playing great. She played really well against Colorado State, and uh, I just hope it continues. You can tell the seniors have have turned it on this time of year. Teams that are that are veteran really start to shine because their their veteran players understand there's not much time left. Young younger players sometimes it can go the other way because they realize how long the season is and they start to burn out a little bit. Do you do anything, you know, now that the top five or top five is probably, I th- it's either out or highly unrealistic. It, it's highly unlikely. Do yeah. you do anything different to kind of gear yourself toward now being the the spoiler or to to just make sure you're either looking at matchups or just coming in at your best for the tournament? I, I think we're, we're just trying to win as many games as we can, <laughs> really. You know, we played, we, played the, we played the toughest schedule in the conference. Um, it, you know, if you consider our our non-conference schedule and we probably took the hardest hit of anybody in the conference with the exception of maybe Fresno uh in in losing 
a you know the conference's best rebounder, the conference's best defensive player, the conference's one of the conference's top scorers. And meanwhile, everybody had everybody back. <laughs> everybody had everybody back plus reinforcements. I think top to bottom, the conference is stronger this year than it was a year ago. Um, and I think right now, I mean, gosh, even if even you know playing that that play-in game or uh, on Sunday is going to be a challenge because I really think the conference is very solid. If you look at everybody's scores with the top of the conference, um, you know everybody's been highly competitive, and so I, I just I don't yeah getting a buy is is certainly a long shot at this point, um, but I think that playing anybody in the tournament is going to be a challenge, and so right now we just we want to. Do the best we can with our last home stand. Go out in a bang for Camry and Nikki, and and see what happens in the in the conference tournament. I asked Joe about the transfer portal, and he was very dismissive. You know, he said it's not something he concerns himself with at all. <laughs> with you, you know, because you'll have a lot of young players who could potentially come back and lead your team, or could leave. Mm -hmm. Is that? Do you ever have those conversations with them to check in, or do you just have to let that play itself out with them? Oh, I th we have conversations with them all the time just to see how they're doing at the academy. And and that's something that's always been there even when the transfer. We, the the program has, has lost very few players from the academy. Sometimes players don't, they stop playing basketball because there's so much to do here and there's so many other things pulling on you that if, if it's not, you know, if you don't think you're ever going to get significant playing time, it's not unusual for them to to choose to just, you know, be a cadet. Uh, very rare for us to lose anybody from the academy, but we're always, always checking in and being sure they're okay. Uh, is there a chance that, that some of the freshmen might not return? Sure, that's always, that's always, that's always there. But yeah, I don't concern myself with it because, you know, we want people here that want to be here and, and things happen all the time in, at the academy that you don't have control over. And you could lose your mind <laughs> worrying about all the things that you don't have control over. You you just have you just have to give your heart and soul to the people who are here. And that's what we try to do. <laughs> Coach, uh, New Mexico, right this week Thursday. Yes, I, I saw the start time is kind of yes. morning, <laughs> eleven o'clock. How did that all kind of come about? Oh, it's a long story. Um, the when they went to these split weekends that had the whole conference, all the coaches up in arms in the conference, one of the things that, that I had actually proposed to all the coaches in the conference is, hey, how about if we all agree to maybe play one of our games early, one of our weekday games early, so that our opponent can can get out and get up, get home or back to, or to wherever they have to go to. Um, there was only a few coaches who agreed to do it, and since I proposed it, I agreed to be one of them. And the first one that called me was the New Mexico coach and said, could we play earlier? And I said, sure, we'll make it a field trip game. We had done a field trip game for our Navy game, but it was on Veterans Day, and a lot of schools weren't in session. So we we thought we could have another one and, and invite all the local uh, elementary schools uh, to bring their kids over and watch the game, and and that's what we've done. I think I think we'll have a decent crowd because of it. Um, but there was only, you know, San Diego State had offered, and and so they also played an earlier game. I asked several of our opponents that we were doing a Thursday weekday game with if there's any chance they'd play earlier, and nobody else was excited about it. But we all, none of us liked the schedule, but you know, we couldn't. We didn't. We didn't step up to help each other out quite as much as I would have hoped. Hoped that we would, but there were some some coaches who did. Was the field trip part of your thought thought process? You know, like to grow the game to get some younger fans in the building. Well, that's been um, that's been a uh, new uh, marketing strategy that began in the sport of women's basketball a few years ago, uh, and that that's been nationwide. And uh, so we started doing it a couple of years ago. And and it's a lot of fun. The, the little the little ones come and they scream their heads off, and you know you have a headache at the end. But it's really, it's really, uh, it's really fun. It's fun for the kids, and they all have a good time. And you know the, 
and it's good for them to see women, you know, young women in uh, in that type of a role model situation. So we hope it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. But but the I you know the agreement was hey if, do it for one if everybody would do it for just one program it would it would be great and. And uh, Mike down at New Mexico, he knows the sucker when he sees one. He called me right away. <laughs> so unfortunately for you, can't wear earplugs because you got to hear your players, right? <laughs> no, it's a good time. You'll see. It'll. It'll. You'll see. It's fun. I think we've got about six hundred or so young, young. Yeah, it's always been a good, a good time. It's, it's not the best for our fans, and I feel badly about that. And especially since our fans have been so good to us, sticking stick by us through thick and thin this year. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you mentioned the growth of the women's game. I mean, they're playing national TV games on the weekend. The ratings are up. Just the overall health of the women's game, wh what are your thoughts on that and just th what you've seen, you know, over the years? Well, that's that's kind of a long story. I mean, I'm – I've been very blessed to have had a front row seat to the whole, the whole growth of the game, and uh, and it's tremendously exciting. And um, sometimes I look out like all all old folks do, and look out at those youngins and say, "You guys have no idea. You have no idea what it was like. If you only knew what it was like before." <laughs> um, so I think there's a little bit of taking it for granted, but uh, but certainly. You know, the there's been a lot of great ambassadors for the sport, and I think that that has helped it grow a great deal. A lot of entertaining coaches, players, um, and I th and I s I will I th I believe that the college women's game will always have a bit of a leg up, even on the professional women's game, just because of the connection with your institutions and the. Um, you know the rivalries and all the things that make college sports so much fun, and it's very present for, for women's basketball too. So it's it's not it's nothing but it, but great. Um, but of course, I used to say back when it was all growing, be careful what you wish for because of course there's negative that comes with it too. How just responding to what you just said? How do you stop your team from listening to outside noise? Because <laughs> I, I think that's a good. They're tip at the for academy. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, so much has changed. I mean, back in the day, you know, you were on the front page of the newspaper, or you were in the evening news, or whatever, and and that's what people saw. And and of course, young people don't. That's not where they get their information these days. That's not where their attention goes. And so. Um, it's it's how much they see it on social media and what they see on social media and um, but they you know when you're at the academy you just don't you don't have a whole lot of time for anything except just being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there <laughs> um, so they tend to be pretty immune to it but I will say for the, for this team they have been in in some very um, you know challenging environments this year and handled it great Colorado State had a great crowd the other night they were I don't know how many thousand, but it was it was quite a good crowd. It was pretty packed, and they just motored on, did their thing, and same with Oklahoma State, um, same with uh, uh, you know our game at Boise State, and uh, they they have played in some tough environments this year and actually handled it pretty well. Um, we just we just have challenges as a team that we've got to we've got to plug some holes and get a little bit better. I remember early January, you sat here and were like, we have to get better defensively. Mm -hmm. Now we're heading into <laughs> March. Do you feel like you've seen that? I think we've gotten better. Um, have we gotten better enough? You know, clearly probably not better better enough, but, but it's not it's not just our defense. It's, it's just it's so doggone hard for us to get a rebound. <laughs> and, and so we have to force turnovers. We struggled forcing turnovers against Colorado State um, because they they play so far from the basket and they dribble the ball a ton and and so it was hard for us to get the turnovers that we needed we we have always worn teams out I mean you you saw us make that surge against Boise State you saw us make that surge against Colorado State that's what we've always done but in the past we were 
either because the opponent wasn't quite as good as they are this year or because we weren't quite as good as we were a year ago, probably a combination of the two, instead of that surge getting, giving us our eight or ten point lead, it's getting us back in the game. And, but we've always worn teams out, and, and none of that's changed. We still, we still outplay people going down the stretch, and, um, but we just struggle, struggle with handling size. We really struggle with handling size, and um, you know, Colorado State's pretty darn good, and I'm not so sure if we hadn't had that one unfortunate incident at the end, <laughs> what might have happened if we. If it had been a one-point game with 20, 25 seconds to play, I don't know. It was rough. It was rough. These. <laughs> Not talking tournament or anything, win or lose, what will you be most proud of for this team? What's going to be your message to them at the end of the season? Wow, that's a good question. Um, you know, last year's team did what they did with absolutely zero pressure because the program had never really performed at a really high level. Done some good things, beaten some teams, been highly competitive, but never really functioned at a really high level. So that that team got the great joy of being, uh, you know, the surprise and golly, let's just play and lo and behold, look what happened. Uh, this team had to deal with the pressure of meeting now that expectation. Uh, I always say it's getting there isn't as tough as staying there. And and I think now as a as a program that's the next step. How do how do you maintain that level of excellence? Um I knew at the beginning of February that February was going to be tough as heck to get to get wins. And I what matters is how often have they played up to their potential. And and with the one UNLV anomaly, they've come pretty darn close every single time out. And they've played their backsides off. And you know, all five foot seven and <laughs> five foot eleven and everything else, they've they've gone out there and, and played their backsides off. And and for the most part I think have have played up to their potential most of the time. And and that's that's all you can ask. I want them just to have kind of a big moment, a big win, a big moment that um, sort of solidifies their own their own legacy, you know, because as you tell teams all the time, look around the room, this team, this particular team is never going to be happen again. So what do you want this team? What do you want to remember about this team in this year? Uh, and I think they're trying really hard to find find all the good they can. <laughs>